What's up guys, TechLab here, and you guys told us that we needed to do an upgrade on our test system. So we've gone out and purchased a new CPU and we bought this. I know, it's an Intel CPU. Now several months ago we decided to build ourselves a new test system and for that one we decided to go with an Intel system. And the CPU that we installed in that at the time was this one. This is the i3-1201F and we did that for a few reasons. The first was because we wanted to have a play around with the 12100F because everybody said it was a super fast CPU and because on the channel we only test older and lower tier graphics cards so it was always going to be just enough. Well that's what we thought until we were fortunate enough to land on a lot of the new more modern graphics cards and then we started to see some issues or to be more exact you guys saw some issues because it's part of some of our testing you highlighted to us that some of our tests were actually suffering from a cpu bottleneck now that was clear to see once we started retesting so unfortunately it's going to be out with the i3 and in with something new now we did speak to our discord community about what we should get and the original idea was to just give it a little bit of a step up to something like the 12600 but after a bit more conversations with everyone, we decided to just jump straight the way up to an i7 and we picked this one up. Now this is the i7-12700K, which means it is an overclockable CPU and it does have built-in graphics. It is an Intel 12th Gen Alder Lake CPU with 12 cores and 20 threads. That's 8 P cores and 4 little tiny E cores. And it has a max turbo frequency of 5.0 GHz. Now hopefully this will give us the boost that we need to be able to get rid of all those bottlenecks for the graphics cards that we test. It is unfortunate to see the i3 go, but we do have some plans for this one, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see where we take this little CPU. But for now, we need to get this new i7 installed and see what kind of a difference it really does make. Okay, so we finally got the CPU swapped over. The i3 is now taken out of the system and the i7 is installed. Now the board that we've got in the system supported the i7 straight out of the box. There was no need to do any BIOS updates, but we did run into a bit of an issue and that issue was down to cooling. We actually thought before we started changing it that maybe the existing cooler wouldn't actually take the uh, 12700K and we were right. The cooler that we actually installed in that system originally was one of these 120 millimeter AIOs that we modified in a previous video. We'll link it at the top. And of course, it will not actually support the 12700. As soon as you actually get into anything that is CPU demanding, the CPU will rock it up to 100% or 100 degrees. 
and you'll start to get a bit of throttling. So we've actually swapped this out and luckily we did have one of our Noctua towers with a dual fan configuration available. So we swapped that over and it's working perfectly fine. But that is something worth noting if you're gonna be doing an upgrade like this, because if you do need a new cooler to cool something like this i7, you'll need something pretty big. So you're gonna to have to add on an extra 50 pounds to 100 just for a cooling solution. If you have already got a cooler that you overestimated when you first built your system, you might be okay, but it's worth checking that up before you actually buy one. But the system is running and we are actually into Windows. Now there were a couple of games that we were running previously that you guys kind of highlighted and it was with the Intel Arc A750. So we're gonna get things loaded up and we'll start one of those games to see if we've seen any improvement. Now the first game that we actually want to test or at least give a bit of a go is of course God of War. Now God of War is a very CPU intensive game so we should have predicted this up front but we're here now and we've got the upgrade so let's give God of War a go. Now in our previous testing with the Interlock A750 and God of War we were actually kind of capping the GPU out at around 60% and that's what really gives us the indication that we have a bit of a CPU bottleneck. That meant that the game would max out in 1080p with 61 frames per second. So we've reconfigured the game to exactly the same settings, 1080p high settings, no help from AMD FSR or anything like that. So let's see if we've got a bit of an increase. The 12700K is running currently running at about 20%, but we are actually maxing out our GPU, which is really good. And we're currently getting an average frames per second of 81. That's an increase of 20 frames per second. And the 1% lows have increased greatly as well. We're currently getting a 1% low of 73. And that was actually substantially lower last time we, we played this, particularly with the i3. So that's actually going to be a bonus. And it's clear that the CPU that we've upgraded is working. The next game we're testing is, of course, Spider-Man Remastered, because it was the next game that you guys identified that we had a little bit of a CPU bottleneck. Straight away, we can see that the, again, the graphics card, the Arc A750 is currently being maxed out now, whereas it was sitting around 70% utilization before. It's now at 99, 98, and we can clearly see straight away that our FPS is up. Now we've run this game again in 1080p high settings, just as we did for the original test where the uh, bottleneck was kind of identified. So clearly we're gonna be getting a better experience from this. Our i7-12700K is currently running at about 50%, so it's pretty happy and it can handle things, but we'll have a bit of a run around and we'll see what happens when we do it. Swinging around the city, we can actually get some pretty decent frames per second here. Now, originally in 1080p high with the i3 processor, we could get a maximum of 103 FPS. And that was with a big run around the city and things like that. So at the moment, we're currently running at an average of 127. So that's a good 20 frames per second more, something like that. But it is going up and down a little bit. We're now going back down to 107 when you go really, really high. But the average is actually working out pretty well. We'll go down to the street now and we'll see what happens when we get a bit more detail going on. So we're currently averaging around 128, but the current is actually floating around. Well, it's now actually gone up to the 160, something like that. So it's not an exact stable frames per second. It is increasing and decreasing by about 50 frames per second. I'm kind of guessing that that's pretty much the game more than anything, but we have clearly removed the bottleneck from this game as well. So for us, this CPU has actually become quite worth it, but is it worth it for any of you out there? Now it completely depends what you're pairing with it. As it lives in our test system, of course, we have different GPUs in the system and we could go from high tier to low tier. So moving up to the 12700K has actually given us a great help, but for the price of it, is it worth you doing it? Well, that depends what graphics card you have. Now for the A750, it's probably not worth it because you're not gonna be looking at super high resolutions and things like that with that card. Anyway, you're probably gonna be down in the lower resolutions aiming for 60 frames per second. And you can do that, of course, with the i3-12100, which we've proven before. So it all depends on how much you want to spend on a CPU and how long you want it to last. There is also another benefit to the i7 for us, and that's because it actually decreases all the loading time. So as you can imagine, testing all of these games all the time with different GPUs, we spend a lot of our time waiting in queues and loading screens to get things running. And to be honest, this game loaded up super fast and it's greatly gonna help us bring you more content. So let me know in the comments below, do you have an i7-12700K and are you really, really happy with it? Or would you have got 
adapted for something else. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can see where we take this next and what graphics card we're going to be pairing with the CPU. Drop a like on this video if you want to see more behind the scenes kind of stuff that we do here on the channel and we'll catch you in the next one.